All right, parts of a circle. Here I have got my circle. There is um, a point in the center of the circle, and I've named that point A, and circles are named after um, the point that is in the, in the center of the circle. So this is called circle A, and there are different parts of circles. One of the parts is called a chord. Chord. You might want to write that down in the vocabulary part. And a chord is a line segment, and the endpoints are on the edge of the circle. I shouldn't say edge. They are on the on lie on the circle. Okay, anywhere they lie, anywhere on the circle, two points. So let's call this point B and point C. So that is a chord, a line segment. A line segment with endpoints on the circle. Okay. And chords can go from any direction. I can have a chord that goes from here to here. That's a chord. Okay, I can have a chord that goes from here to here. That's a chord. All right, so it doesn't matter. Now, it also has what's called a diameter. Now, here's something that's a little tricky. A diameter is actually a chord with a special name. The special name is diameter. Any chord that goes through the center of the circle is called a diameter. So it is a line segment that passes through the center. Okay? Line segment, just like the chord, but it passes through the center of the circle. Actually, instead of saying line segment, on top of it, why don't you write chord? Because that's what it really is. It's a chord, but it's a chord that goes through the center of the circle. And you can call it a diameter, because it has the endpoints are on the circle. So let's give this C and D. Okay. Next up we have what's called a radius. And a radius starts at the center of the circle. So it's a line segment that begins in the center of the circle and it has an end point on the circle. Okay? So a radius got endpoints. Erase that, folks. It's a, again a line segment. It's a line segment with endpoints. Uh oh, we're stuck. Please don't give up on me. And okay, it's messing with me, guys. There we go. Line segment with endpoints. If I go slower, in the center <laughs> and on the circle. Okay. So a radius. Starts in the center, and the other one is on the circle. Radius, when you have more than one radius, it is called radii. Radii. That's more 
than one radius. We don't say radiuses. We say radii. Here's some interesting information and important information about radii. Um, a lot of kids don't realize that a diameter is actually made up of two radii. So if I said to name the radii in this example, a lot of kids, but won't be you because you are going to be smarter than that. Um, if I said to name the radii, a lot of kids would say, well, here's a radius, and the way we name um, radii is, since it's a line segment, we do the same way we do other line segments. We put capital letter, A, E, and then I put the symbol on top. Okay, there's a line segment. And of course, it could be E, A also. doesn't have to be one way. However, there are two other radii. There is also A, D, and a C. So there are three radii in here. Okay, so don't forget that the diameter is definitely made up of two radii. One starting at the center and going off to the right, and the other one going off to the left. Oh, so if I then said to name chords, all right, name the chords. Well, the first one you'll probably see is chord BC, which is a line segment, so it has to have the line. But remember, the diameter is also a chord, because the definition for a chord is that it's just a line segment with endpoints on the circle. So this is also a chord. If I said to name the diameter, there is only one. There's only one line segment that goes through the center, so the diameter is CD. Could it also be DC? Yes. So either way, any of these can be switched around. Naming line segments, it doesn't matter which one comes first. Okay. I think there was one other piece that I didn't show you on the circle, and that is called an arc. An arc. And if you think of an arch, an arch is like this, right? Well, it gets its name from the word arc. And an arc just means a part of the circle. So named by points. So if I go like right there, that's an arc. Okay, I could even put endpoints on there if I wanted to, but it's just a part of the circle. This is an arc. All right, well that's what you need to know about parts of a circle. Other parts of a circle are central angles and sectors. Central angles are formed when two radii meet at the center, okay? And think about it, they're angles and they're in the center. So basically it's center angles, but they call them central angles. Let's get some um, points here. Let's say that uh, this is point A, this is R, let's put some new letters here, S, this is V, and let's make this W. Okay, so the central angles, look at the center and the angles that are formed from the radii. So the central angle here is R, A, V. We write it, remember the vertex has to be in the middle, so here's one central an angle, R, A, V. Could it be V, A, R? Yes, as long as A is in the middle. Another central angle could be R, A, S, or S, A, R. Is there another central angle? Absolutely. One more, and it could be S, A, W, saw, or was, W, A, S. All right, so the central angles are formed. Oh, 
we got one more, sorry, um, by the radii. So we've, we've actually only done three. There is another central angle, sorry. The other central angle we missed, WAV. WAV. Okay, so those are the central angles. So what is a sector? Well, a sector is the part of the circle that is enclosed by two radii. So that is a sector. Let's get our highlighter here. All right, so this is a sector. There's one. This is a sector. Here's a sector. And this is a sector. All, okay. One, two, three, four sectors. I need my pen back. So I have four sectors. Four central angles and four sectors. All right, check out the sectors here. What I wanted to show you is that, do you notice this cord? This cord is inside this sector, okay? It's not a separate sector itself. Sectors um, need to be uh, formed by two radii, all right? Radii that go to the center. This is not a radius, so uh, that's why it's inside this part of the sector. All right, so don't be confused by that. Sectors come from two radii, which meet in the center. The last thing I want to show you is how do you find the measurement of a central angle? How do I find out how many degrees it is from here to here without using a protractor? All right, well, there is a formula. A circle has 360 degrees all the way around, okay? If I add this angle plus this angle plus this angle, it should add up to 360 degrees, all right? So what I need to do is take the percent, usually these uh, represent pie graphs, all right? A pie chart, and you might say, um, 33% of the kids polled thought uh, they like, let's say, green as their favorite color. 25% people said uh, orange was their favorite color. And 42% of the kids said purple was their favorite color. So say that this was a circle graph. If we wanted to figure out what the actual measurement is, the um, of the central angle. What we do is we take this percentage, we change it to a decimal, and we've done that a lot, right? So we take 33%, change it to a decimal. Remember, it's 33 hundredths. So we're gonna divide, we're gonna get rid of the percent, which means we are going to move that decimal over one, two spots. So this turns into 0 0.33. Now I have a decimal, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna multiply that by 360. Since there's 360 degrees, so go ahead on your handy dandy calculator, plug in 0 0.33 times 360, and what do you get? 118.8, we are measuring an angle, and angles are measured in degrees. 118.8. You have to think about it. Does that look about 118? It's more than 90, right? 90 would be straight up and down, so it looks like it's pretty accurate. Okay, let's look at this 25%. 25% represents one-fourth, doesn't? Hmm. So let's see what we get when we 
find out the central angle of the people who liked orange. So let's take our 25%, change it to a decimal. How do we do that? Right? So it's 0 0.25. And then what do we multiply it by? 360. Take out your handy dandy calculators. 0 0.25 times 360. Bam. Did you get 90 degrees? Doesn't this pretty much look like a 90 degree? It is. So that's how you figure out the measurement of central angles. Easy peasy, right? All right, we will do more practice on this in class tomorrow. So bring these, this note sheet. It'll help you. See ya.